In this video we're going to apply our ideas of Newton's laws to problems involving lifts, helicopters and vehicles towing a trailer. So for example one we've got the diagram shows the velocity time graph for a lift as it moves from one floor to a higher floor on a skyscraper. Inside the lift there is a 10 kilogram parcel and during the first five seconds of the motion the reaction between the lift floor and the parcel is 103 newtons. We've got to determine the acceleration of the lift during the first five seconds and deduce the total distance traveled by the lift. And we've also got to find the reaction between the lift floor and the parcel during the second and third stages of the journey. So, for part A, we're told that the reaction between the lift floor and the parcel is 103 newtons. And that we know that the parcel has a weight of, it has a mass of 10 kilograms, so a weight of 10 g or 98 newtons. So the forces acting on the parcel are the reaction from the lift floor and the weight of the parcel. So applying Newton's second law vertically, we can say that we have R minus 10G must equal 10 times the acceleration. Now we've been told though that R is 103. So that's 103 take away 98 is equal to 10A. In other words, A is 0.5 meters per second squared. That means that because we've got a constant acceleration that we know using V equals U plus AT that the velocity of the lift after the 5 seconds of acceleration is going to be 2.5 meters per second. So we can add 2.5 meters per second onto the velocity axis of our graph and we know that the distance traveled by the um, lift is equal to the displacement of the lift during its 70 seconds of motion, which is going to be the area under the velocity time graph that we've got. And the area of a trapezium is a half times by the length of the two parallel sides times by the perpendicular distance between the two per uh, parallel sides. So in this case, the area is a half of 70 plus um, 45 times by 2.5, which gives me 143.75 meters. So the distance traveled by the lift is 143.75 meters. For part B, we've got to find the reaction between the lift and the parcel during the second and third stages of the journey. During the second stage of the journey, the acceleration is zero since the velocity is constant at 2.5 meters per second. And Newton's second law, therefore, tells me that the resultant force vertically must be zero. So I must have R2 minus 10g equals naught. In other words, R2 is 98 newtons. For the third stage of the motion, we've got the acceleration is the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the time taken during the third stage, which is 20 seconds. The initial velocity for the third stage is 2.5 meters per second. The final velocity is zero, so the acceleration is naught minus 2.5 divided by 20, which gives me minus 0.125 meters per second squared. In other words, we've got an acceleration downwards of 0.125 meters per second squared. So our lift diagram now, again we've got the reaction and the weight as being the two forces acting. We've got a downwards acceleration of 
0.125. So applying Newton's second law this time downwards, we've got 10g minus r3 must equal 10 times 0.125, which rearranges, rearranges to give me r3 is 96.75 newtons. Our second example considers an air sea rescue. At one instant during an air sea rescue being undertaken by a helicopter of mass 10 tons. Now a metric ton is a thousand kilograms remember. And the helicopter is rescuing a man of mass 75 kilograms. The man is accelerating upwards at 0.18 meters per second squared whilst the helicopter is accelerating downwards at 0.02 meters per second squared. Making any simplifications clear, determine the tension in the rope connecting the man to the helicopter and the upward thrust produced by the helicopter's rotors. Well, first of all, let's consider the man. As far as the man is concerned, the forces acting are the tension in the rope and his weight. He's accelerating upwards at 0.18 meters per second squared. So we can apply Newton's second law upwards on the man and we get the equation T minus 75G must equal 75 times by 0.18. So T minus 735 is 13.5. So T is 748.5 Newtons. If we now consider the helicopter, the forces we've got acting on the helicopter, we've got its weight of 10,000 G, we've got the tension in the rope pulling it down, and we've got the thrust upwards produced by the rotors, and we're told that the helicopter is accelerating downwards at 0.02 meters per second squared. So if we apply Newton's second law downwards, on the helicopter, then we have got 10,000 G minus T plus, sorry, plus T minus the thrust must equal 10,000 times by 0 0.02. So the thrust is equal to 10,000 G plus 748.5 minus the 10,000 times by 0 0.02 which is 200, which gives me the thrust as being 98,548.5 newtons. In example three then, we have a car of mass 800 kilograms pulling a trailer of mass 200 kilograms. It's accelerating up a slope inclined at four degrees to the horizontal at 0.2 meters per second squared. The resistance of the car's motion is 750 newtons and the resistance of the trailer's motion is, 200, is 250 newtons. We've got to find a driving force produced by the car's engine and the force in the tow bar linking the car to the trailer. So our first job is going to be to consider the whole system and draw a force diagram for the whole system which will look something like this. So we've got the driving force, we've got the weight of the car, we've got the weight of the trailer, we've got the normal reaction between the car and the road, we've got the normal reaction between the trailer and the road, we've got the resistance of the car's motion, and we've got the resistance of the trailer's motion. And we've got an acceleration of 0.2 meters per second squared. So if we apply Newton's second law up the slope, then we will obtain, first of all, the driving force minus the component of the weight of the car down the slope, which is 800 G sine 4, minus the component of the trailer down the slope, which is 200 G sine 4, minus the resistance of the car's motion, which is 750 newtons, minus the resistance to the trailer's motion, which is 250 newtons, must equal the mass times the acceleration of the whole system, 
and the mass of the whole system is 1000 and the acceleration is 0 0.2. So tidying that up gives me D minus 546.89 minus 136.72 minus 1000 equals 200. In other words, D is 1884 newtons. To move on to find the force in the tow bar linking the car to the trailer, we need to either consider the car alone or we need to consider the trailer alone. It's slightly easier to consider the trailer alone. So here's a diagram for the forces in the on acting on the trailer and we're letting T denote the force in the tow bar between the car and the trailer. So the trailer is experiencing a force T up the slope. The car is pulling the trailer up the slope. So it's exerting a force T up the slope on the trailer. Applying Newton's second law up the slope then, we have T minus the component of the weight acting down the slope, which is 200 G sine 4 minus the resistance to the trailer's motion, which is 250, must equal the mass of the trailer, 200, times by the acceleration, which is 0 0.2. And that gives me T minus 136.72 minus 250 has got to equal 40. So the tension in the tow bar, or the force in the tow bar, is 427 newtons. So in this video, we've looked at three examples of applying Newton's laws to different, almost real life situations.